So what is up, guys? We are back today with episode seven. Today we are joined by Derek and Wyatt. So what's up, guys? Hi, what's up? How are you doing? Wyatt, how are you doing? Doing good. So um, Wyatt could not connect his um video, so you know he's just gonna be joining us in voice today. We will try to get this issue fixed by a later date. I mean, yeah. So we finally came up with a name for the podcast, and it's going to be called Late Night Shots, since it's basically uh, 1 a.m. right now and 1.20. Yeah, so we just don't want to go to sleep yet, so might as well film something interesting for you guys to watch. Um, today we are going to be talking about the Iowa Hawkeyes, like how, they're going to, how the team's going to do in next year or so. Why not? Keep the picture of uh, Tony Cassiope. Sir. I mean, uh, yeah, you want to just get started with it? Yeah. Um, so, I, overall, as a team, they were ranked um, number one last year. Didn't have a chance to compete at the national tournament because the whole cancellation shit. God damn it, I'm not supposed to curse. Well, well you know, whatever. It doesn't matter anymore. Fuck it. Uh, so, obviously, at 125, we got Spencer Lee, two-time national champion. Not going to be a four-timer. Block him on Instagram. Um, yeah. So, uh, I really right. think uh, the biggest story here is if Dayton Fix, they don't really have him going down to 125 yet. But if he does but if he does go down, who knows? And the uh, yeah. biggest competition, if he doesn't, is going to be Pat Glory from Princeton and uh, Vito Arruja from Cornell. So, what do we think about that? Um, I think saying right now without Fix in the lineup, I think Spencer Lee is one of, if not the most dominant 125 pound wrestlers at the moment right now. He is a Pennsylvania boy. Um, as you see, you know, uh, he ended up losing in the finals his senior year to his teammate at 133, Austin DeSanto. So um, can he Pretty continue sure to win? Good, but that's fine. Yeah. Can he continue to win national titles? I think. Yes, I see one more for him being a three timer. Or I mean does he does he lose to Dayton Fix at one twenty five? I mean, I would agree with you saying if Fix does drop down to twenty five, that will definitely be a problem for Spencer Lee. Definitely. So again, um I'm a Jersey boy, so if you look at um Spencer Lee's matches with Pat Glory the first time, he was an early second period techies fourteen note coming out the first. Second time, though, it's a 9-5 to five match. Everybody's going to hate me for this, but I legitimately do not care anymore. So I'm going to have uh, Glory beating Spencer Lee in the finals. And I'm going to have uh, Vito taking – yeah, v- Vito pretty much takes third. Nobody's there to stop him. So, Wyatt, what do we think? Dude, I can't take this seriously with no audio, no video. You good, my dude? Yeah, my bad. I don't really know a lot about, like, that team. I don't really watch college wrestling. Oh. Uh. I, um, I'm thinking, like, I, I, I disagree with you on this topic. I think <laughs> Spencer Lee wins a third national title. Uh, Actually, wh- like, hold up, hold up. Why? You can just chill here. Why not? Just listen to this. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, what were you saying? I disagree with you in the fact that I think um, national championship tournament Lee is a different Spencer Lee than during the season. I feel like he flips that extra switch in his mind and he kind of leaves it all out there, especially now knowing that this next season will most likely be his last. Um, I think you see him, you know, just I think you see him working extra hard in the off season right now. And him just coming back is just a total monster. And I think, um, you know, I think that that's going to be with the whole with the whole Iowa lineup. I think, you know, they they are going to be a force to be reckoned with again. Um, I know we talked about this before we started. Um, like you said about Cornell, Cornell is going to be also. You know, they have a young team, like you said, but they are looking good. I mean, Penn State also picked up a bunch of hammers. So. I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about that in, you know, in another episode about other, you know, other teams. But uh, back to Iowa, yeah, I, I think Spencer Lee takes another national championship. All right. I mean, uh, 
I mean, that's that's what mostly everybody's going to say. But oh, yeah. People also have to realize Spencer Lee didn't really – the highest competition he wrestled was Piccinini. Piccinini is obviously a very good wrestler, very up there. Still going to be wrestling on the international scene, I think. Yeah, actually, I do know that. I think he's at – actually at uh, the Princeton club. So, you know who else is there? Pat Glory. Pat Glory. Yeah. Pat Glory beat Nick Piccinini pretty handily. I think it was like 5-2 or 5-3 match so it, I think that match Glory's are insanely tough dude the thing about Glory and difference between Glory and Piccinini is I've seen Glory wrestle all throughout high school look back at a lot of his stuff four time state finalist uh, two time state champ the only guys he's lost to are Gerard Angelo who wrestles for Rutgers and Angelo's like a 165 now this was his freshman year and he got pinned by Sebastian Rivera in his sophomore year at six minutes, so it was very – it was one of the most intense matches. That's why Glory versus Seabass was such like a, an intense match at NCAs was the last – two years ago, last year. Yeah. So I just think that – I don't think Spencer Lee can turn Pat Glory on top anymore. I agree with you there. I, I mean, think I – don't, I don't think it'll be a fall. I, I doubt it'll be a fall. I don't – definitely don't think it'll be a tech. I think I, it's a good close match. I don't win either way. No. I think if anybody – Pat Glory is very susceptible. He could very well get caught and pinned. Yeah. But I still think – I think I think, I think think it's going to be a battle from the feet, right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be – Spencer Lee is not the greatest from bottom. No. Pat Glory is also very good on top. That's what I'm saying. If you see, like, you know, him you know, him getting that first choice – and he goes on top, and you know he he do, does something. He turn, ends up turning him, getting a set, a back, you know, or pinning him even. You know, I think be- honestly, if he if he he would have to pick bottom, come out of the first period zero zero. Spencer Lee comes out firing. He can hold him off. Maybe only gets a stall warning. Spencer Lee picks, or Pat Glory picks bottom, gets out, forces Spencer Lee to pick bottom or neutral. And that's his match. Yeah. If he can get that, that's how pitching any one. Like, I guess he pinned him, he got caught. But I think that was pitching in his match to win either way, just because of the way he, – because he got out from bottom. If he gets out from bottom, what does that tell the Iowa coaches that Lee cannot turn him? Yeah. That's really the way it is with that. So that's why I'm going to go with my uh, final pick to be Pat Glory. And you're, you still got Spencer Lee? I think um, if we don't see a return from Dayton Fix, I 100% agree at Spencer Lee at one point. Yeah, we're going to keep uh, Fix at 133, though, for now. So. Yeah, for now, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. But pretty much I see Spencer Lee walking his way through Big Tens. Oh, yeah. Walking his way to the to the NCAA semifinals, really. Yeah. Until he would have um, – hmm, Jacob Camacho, maybe from the guy who beat uh, Jack Mueller. So yeah. maybe he gives him like a little more of a fight. I, I think he goes all six minutes with him. And then Glory versus Vito is going to be the other semi, which is going to be a complete dog fight. They've split matches this year. Glory won 10 to 8 in the EIWA finals. And the first time uh, Vito actually pitted Glory in the first period. So Vito's also yeah. an amazing top wrestler. But Glory's top game, Glory's bottom game is – he was just young at that point in college. Like, he, he was one of the strongest high school kids I've ever seen. But I think he's getting, like, back to that point in college. So, I think he's going to be insanely hard to turn, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, you can't count Vito out. No, no, you know, you definitely can't. You have to put him in that, that top three, top four scenario where, you know, he gets a good, he gets a good match with Glory and pins him or, you know – he wins by points, you know, anything there. You know, like you said, they, they did split. And, you know, that's going to be a toss-up. I mean, if you see that in the finals, in the, in the semifinals, um, yeah, he might go out there and shock some people. Yeah, you know. I um, mean, you know, I think that the fact that we haven't – damn, this fly went out. We, I think the fact that we haven't seen Vito for a whole year, I really don't know. I saw the match against Vito and Dayton Fix. I mean, Vito was up 6-0. Stunned up getting tagged because Fix is superior part to our game. So, I think that match could really go either way, honestly. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Vito still has the possibility to take out 
to take out the also. And most people are going to remain ignorant to the fact that Glory, to that lead, just completely walked his way through the through everybody last year. Not taking into into effect that he didn't wrestle Glory and Vito's right up there with Glory, so it could very well be close matches, or yeah. especially just text them both. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. You know, nobody knows until until it happens, until we see the tournament happen. You know, or who knows? It could be a first round match, and all of a sudden, you know, Glory gets Glory gets beat, or you know, Vito gets beat. Who knows? Well, Lee could get. I beat. honestly think those three are like they're yeah. just so much better. Than, yeah, I told White he could leave. So I think those three are basically the locks coming into the semis, really. Yeah, I, I mean, who who else do you see there, though? Who do you think you see Lee wrestling at the top? Do I see wrestling in the finals? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, no, in the semis. Who do you see Lee wrestling in the semis, then? I really honestly don't know. I think there's, like, there's multiple people that can make two. I think um, Devin Schroeder can make it, two, can make it through from uh, Purdue. Um, yeah. That match against Lee, he wrestled him. He was actually yeah. He he did there. wrestle tough. That's the thing. Like, it's also hard to say because Lee's out here teching every kid. Yeah. yeah. Don't know who the... He he's he's been near untouchable. Oh, uh, Ravon Foley from Michigan State is a uh, is only a junior now, so his weight class is pretty young. And the fact that a lot of these people have stayed at this weight class, like you yeah. Know, Ravon Foley from Michigan State, or <coughs> I can even see Drew Hildebrandt from. Central Michigan, Brandon Paisel from Lehigh, I think so. that that sounds that's a meal pick. Brandon yeah. Paisel from Lehigh. So that's gonna be pretty intense uh, EIWA, which I've seen in a lot of the weight classes. Like people are saying like it's gonna be it's, it's normally the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, Pac twelve and all Big Twelves and all that. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the EIWA is making a come up like Oh yeah, there's definitely a, there's a lot of solid wrestlers in the air. Because you're gonna have yeah. Glory is gonna be most likely gonna be the one seed if we're just seeding it right now. Vito's gonna be the two seed. Brandon Pace is gonna be the three seed. Who else do we have? Um, Michael Coliaco from Penn, who's all, who's a very good kid. Joe Mancio from Columbia. Yeah, he's yeah that kid from Columbia. He's actually really really good. Yeah, again another Jersey guy, state champ. Didn't do great. His uh. Junior had the injury default. Then he lost to uh, Mitch Polito from Lehigh, who ended up losing to Robert Howard, winning winning his first state title. Gage Gray from American, who's not that great, but I mean, he's still up there. And uh, Dylan Ryder from Hofstra is all right. And that's pretty much it. But, like, I think that weight class is basically, like, top top three guys have solidified themselves, Glory, Vito, and uh, Petzl. But I think the other two guys might be are still going to qualify for nationals, maybe win a match or two. Yeah, yeah, the EIWA ranking. Up. No. Yeah, that's, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I think, I think you know the EIWA, especially you know with with you know Lehigh being there, you yeah. know I think you, you know Lehigh obviously you know they have a solid lineup. You had a solid lineup last year. Uh, you saw them beat Oklahoma State, um, their first duel. Lehigh. Went down there and uh, the Liam went, yeah, Lehigh was home. It's not the same as they have been. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely not. But uh, I was actually there. We got, we ended up getting tickets to the Ghost see Lehigh and Oklahoma State wrestle um, the whole my whole team, and uh, it was crazy. Um, Oklahoma State ended up forfeiting and without realizing that that would have put them over. Uh, well, they, uh, they forfeited. It was one of the upper weights. I think it was like maybe. Have maybe, you? Win? No. No, no, no. Woods wrestled. I was maybe eighty four. Oh, Jordan Cutler, right? Yeah, I think he was he hurt during the season at this point. Are you high forfeit or OK State forfeit? Uh, OK, OK State forfeited. I don't think it would have made a difference. Yeah, no, no. They end up losing by a point. I think I think he would have been. <laughs> yeah. If we're talking about Cutler, oh, yeah. Cutler one seventy four. I don't know the one eighty four is. Maybe they just didn't have anybody on backup on. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I think the starter was hurt, and Oklahoma State just didn't have anyone to send out. And you know, Maybe, they, they, no, I think he might just probably miss the weight because if he's hurt, normally they bring somebody, and they're yeah. wrestling away, so they can't just call somebody from Oklahoma. You know? Yeah. So honestly, I think it's still the top three guys. Big slip for himself. Pato could be a dark horse, maybe knockoff from Gloria Rito, but I don't see him. Lock- I see. Him Lee pretty much running right through him with Major, at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my final pick is still going to be Glory. You got Lee, so. Yeah. 
All right, let's go to uh, 133. They have um, the man, Austin DeSanto. The lunatic. Yeah. Um, um, Flo has it ranked at five, right? Five? I think so. RBY is four. Four? Which, uh -huh. I mean, that's, that's a toss-up there. RBY and DeSanto. RBY. You think? Yeah. Uh, I, I think DeSanto is only so far he can get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but like, I just feel that way. What I actually had listed out for this weight class is that Sebastian Rivera, Stefan Micic, Dayton Fix, Sammy Alvarez, RBY, then DeSanto. And yeah. Then Colby and uh, Austin Gomez. I could agree with you that I, I don't see Austin DeSanto being in the top four or five category. Yeah, I don't either. You know, especially like you said, with Fix and Micic coming back. Yeah. I mean, I think you could see, you could see that in the finals right there. I mean, you know, with Rivera as well, you know. I I, Jersey boy, I'm still going to side with the Rivera. I just think he's had, like, a really good season, and this is his year to put it together, you know. Um, but I, I want to see Rivera versus Micic in the finals. Again, two seniors duking it out for the last season. Rivera obviously didn't have a good match against Jack Mueller. Yeah. And if not getting a shot at the finals. Micic might have beat Seth Groves. Who knows if DeSanto didn't cartwheel come over him. No, I am going to Both say guys been up there all the time. I think like it's their shot to be in the finals is going to be a complete dogfight. I'm going to disagree with you again, and I'm going to put uh, Stevan Micic as the national champ at uh, 132 against um, Rivera in the finals. Yeah, I mean that, that that could very well go either way, you know. Yeah, but then again. You can't count out Dayton Fix. 100% not. But And that's what I mean, especially, though, if you see him drop to 25. The the main thing that I'm going to say about Dayton Fix is he, he has to keep his weight under control. So he's yeah. cutting from, like, 140, 145 on a weekly basis. Yeah. He probably has to chill around, like, 133 yeah. at the most because he has to make 25.4, which is 57 kgs. Yeah. On the trials. Same thing that I don't know Suryana's coming back. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So if we move down, we also got to talk about Santos. You know, we move down a little bit. I think one of the biggest dark horses in the weight class is going to be Sammy Alvarez from Rutgers. Yeah, 100%. He went to double overtime. You saw, we all seen that crazy scramble with the RBY. They've been two point matches every time. RBY is a sophomore. We've seen the jump that he made from freshman to sophomore year. I think we're going to yeah. see it with Alvarez, too, and Alvarez beats RBY. We can so, – you can very well see him in the national finals. But for the sole reason that – he could very well win him in the national title. I'm going to say that for the sole reason that I've seen – he's another Jersey guy, right? I've seen him wrestle every single year throughout high school. He's a four-time – I think he's a four, four or three-time state finalist. Only won one state title. He wrestled Anthony Clark twice, who's the Princeton commit. He wrestled Rob Howard and beat him in overtime his last year or so. He, I mean, that's, a, that's another thing you have to think about is where is Rob Howard going? Is, red shirt, red shirt. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean. It's not like Penn State really needs. Yeah, they don't, they don't need to start. I mean, honestly, I don't see any of the freshmen they're bringing in right now starting except yeah. for maybe at heavyweight. Kirk is – no, Kirk already uses red shirt, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've... Um, I think Carter Starokey's coming out of red shirt. Uh, like, I, I don't know – like, I, again, I don't – I wish they didn't take off Aaron Brooks' red shirt, but they had to do it. Yeah, they, they had to. It's, it's not like – it was like, yeah. And, you know, he did show up. He yeah. did show up to wrestle. I just think that extra year could have done a lot for him, like, just personally, but you know, team got to put the team first at some points. Yeah. Um, yeah, Carter Skoroki ranked top five, so coming in. I haven't seen much of him, I mean, tell you, but he, he's looking pretty solid. I think he ends up top 10 no matter what. Yeah. Um, about Penn State, if you look back a little bit, they haven't had many, they haven't had a solid, solidified one, 125 spot. I have my opinions on that. They had I Nick think Lutis and they had Nick Suriano. After Suriano was gone, it was Carson Kuhn and Devin Schnapps, 
sharing the spot. And then they had Brandon Meredith. Meredith isn't bad, but he's he's top twenty five kid, but he's not. Um, they had a they right now they actually have um Jack Davis who wrestled at Wyoming Seminary, uh, who was a no, he was at one point number five in the world. And he got fifth in the in the world prep national champ. Um, again, I think you get also high school. Yeah, I I think um, again um, he didn't wrestle last year. Um, I I think you could see him make an appearance in the lineup at thirty three or twenty five. Um, that's you know in that situation where you I, I'm going to say that's a Meredith spot. I think he yeah. showed, showed a lot of good things, a lot of tough matches. Like he beat Michael Koliaka from Penn, lost to Michael D'Agostino from Northwestern by like two points. Brandon Peso handled him a little bit. In no, he wasn't even Peso wasn't even wrestling up. Yeah, Peso handled him a little bit. Am getting sleep, my dude? I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, like you said, I, I see DeSanto, you know, I definitely see him in the top eight. I don't see big him story. breaking in that. Yeah. I, I don't see him breaking in that top, that top six. The big story 133, Cade Brock from Oklahoma State. Does the All-American. Yes. I, I I think that's a big maybe. I think he might be able to take out. Ooh, Mickey Phillippe beat Sammy Alvarez. Yeah, that did happen. If you think about that, Mickey Phillippe, Sammy Alvarez, Roman Barber Young are all about like the same body type, long, lanky dudes. Yeah. The Santos more just like just like in his own class, people. Yeah. And then Mitrich and Rivera are like the same, and then Fix is like. Fix is the most Fix. technical on this feet. Yeah, I agree with that. He can't turn you on top, but he can ride on top. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think many of these guys are top riders either. No. Yeah. Also, another thing we haven't came across is Mickey Phillippe actually beat Dane Fix. Yeah. He ended up losing to Luke Pletcher, and then Fix ended up beating Pletcher, I think, like 3 2. Actually, I think it was pretty close. Yeah. That could very well be a big thing. Um, Montori Bridges from Wyoming. Ridge Lover from Nebraska is a guy we haven't talked about. Uh, he had a – I think he had like a one takedown match with RBY. Yeah. He's a very good Greco guy. Yeah, that's, that's really it about him. I mean, he could very well make some more. He could throw kids. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have one. The open after that, honestly, as I'm looking yeah. at Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I so think going to be your final pick at one thirty-three. I think I'm gonna, like I said, stick with Stevan Mitrich. Mm -hmm. I'm still gonna go with uh, Sebastian Rivera. Where do you think the sandal places? Seven. Who do you think places ahead of him? I've been sixth. Places ahead of him, I think you know you got to count. Fix is gonna be in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you got Mitrich, Fix. Um. Rivera. Rivera. Then you have, I think, Sammy Alvarez. Okay. RBY. Okay. That's what? That's five. Yep. So then he, that would be put him in the six spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'd move him up to six. Yeah. I don't know where to put Mickey Philby. Because he hasn't had a big show out of season, but he's been up there. That's what I'm saying. Do you put him at? Do you put him in the top eight? Do you not put him in the top eight? I think he's definitely going to hold him again. I I put him at seven, maybe seven, eight, eight, right there. I I don't know. He's a very good top rider. That's yeah. kryptonite, you know. Yeah. This yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Stevan Mitrich. You stick with Stevan Mitrich? Yeah. All right. Um, All right. So, 141, who do they have listed on flow? Jaden Ironman or? Um, I think it's Ironman. I was gonna say, yeah, Ironman. But, I, I, but, you know, you got Max Muir in there too. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think they're just going to flip based on where Yanni goes. They don't want Ironman. And, yeah, I, don't, I was going to say, I don't think they want him wrestling. Ironman has been a big talk. I don't think he, he's really any competition. So, so are you going to see them flip flop depending on duels, and then you're going to see it the in the NCAA's and the Big no. Tens where they put 
what I'm what I what I think is gonna happen is they're gonna see where Yanni goes. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure Yanni's gonna go at one forty one. Yeah. For the for the real fact that he still has to make weight for the Olympic trials and all that. Yeah, that that is I know I he's in like one of those super big guys that looks like he cuts a lot of weight, uh, maybe like five ten pounds most, nothing crazy. Yeah, you know I feel like you're one of the only people that really does think about like how their Olympic weights and everything too because you did bring that up with Spencer Lee as well that yeah. you know they kind of got to stick you know right around yeah. that. Exactly. That's that a big thing. Yeah, but, I agree with that. Um, I mean. I think if we have Max Mir in here, people are saying Jaden Ironman versus Anthony Etchemendia. I think Ironman handles him. Maybe I agree. Awesome. But Max Mirren versus Anthony Etchemendia, I think that's a very cl- I think that's a very good match. Yeah. Max Mirren isn't the guy who scores a lot of points, but he's easily the most underrated guy on the Iowa team. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, Get more of like a Pat Lugo defensive. He's a mix between like Austin Santo and Pat Lugo. Like, yeah. he doesn't score many points, but his leg attacks are very high percentage. He's a very good finisher. He's not necessarily a quick finisher, but he finishes very strong and very good. Yeah, I was gonna say you can definitely like you can kind of see like based on just the way they wrestle. You know, you can probably pick out who he's wrestling around with in the room. You know, at practice, you probably see him. And that's why I think Iowa's so versatile because they have so many different guys. And all yeah, they have range off of each other. Yeah. You look at Spencer Lee. Spencer Lee just is – he's not really good of an example of this. I mean, he's, he just does his own thing, Spencer Lee. But DeSanto, you see him picking up, like, different moves. When he first came into Iowa, what move did he have? He had the dump. That was it. Yeah. Now you can see – I've seen him hit the – was it the lefty sweep single? Yeah. Very good. Um, he hits the under, He's been hitting the underarm spin. But he hits like the backwards, like bridge off of the, the shot, like when he's inside. Yeah, of the, yeah, he um, to do it. Yeah, it's like you can't. If I can hit the underarm spin, I go this way. If I can't, I go the other way. Either way, it's a finish. Yeah, maybe not on a guy like RBY. You know, the guy's in, who's insanely out of like Smith's basically just finesses way out of anything. But I mean, how did you feel when you saw that match? When you saw that during the season, that RBY. Santo match and you you saw him injury forfeit out. Do you, do you think he was really feeling that or? You know what? I honestly kind of mad. I didn't watch this live because I had like a duel the next morning at like four o'clock. Yeah. But I watched like all the highlights on the bus there. Yeah. Honestly, so what do you, about it, um, do you do you think do you think it was like a true like a true injury because he wrestled like what like. A couple of days later, he was fine. I just think, again, like, if you heard what Tom Brown said, Tom Brown's like, I thought he could wrestle through it. But he just panicked, he just panicked in the scenario. I think yeah. that's completely true. Because yeah. I've been I, in a scenario, I'm like, oh, my knee's, like, broken or something. And then, like, I just relax, give it, like, a minute, and then I'm like, okay, it's just, it's just a little bit of pain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I heard a lot of people say that he, he most likely could have wrestled through it. I don't think he faked it, though. I'm not, no, uh-uh. not going to say no, that. No, no, no. Maybe he did get out of the cradle, but he – okay, the only way I can see that he faked this is the first time. To get out of that cradle, yeah. He get out of the cradle. Second time, he just kind of subconsciously did it again. But it's like, oh, can you really fake that again? Yeah. Not really. And then he's like, oh, let's just forfeit the match. I'm probably going to get pinned. I, I, I don't think I can do this again. What if he gets caught in the cradle again? Yeah, he's, I mean, tough. he's like, oh, you ju- you just uh, bitched your way out of two pins, and then you got stuck again, like you know. Yeah, because I mean, I feel like you know, I agree with that. I think he most likely probably would have got put in a scenario where he would have gotten put on his back again, and you know, if he really birds out again, and that that's you know, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, props to him. He made a, he made some good adjustments coming into Big Tens. Yeah. It was a three to two match. Didn't get to really see it. I was at the state tournament for New Jersey. You know, watching the boys. Um, yeah, honestly. Oh, uh, so let's get back to one forty one. A couple guys that might give Max Murin some trouble. I think Nick Lee pretty much handled Max Murin. Yeah. I think Yanni and Nick Lee have solidified themselves as the top two in this weight class. Agreed. Any of, any of the guys I'm gonna list right now, I think are basically equal to each other. Yeah. We have Chad Red from Nebraska. Yeah. 
Again, we have Max Miram, um, Dom Demas from Oklahoma State, Ian Parker from Iowa State, Real Woods from Stanford, um, Caden Jafeller, and Tariq Wilson. All right. Um, I think as my, as my champ, I think obviously I'm going to go Yanni Diakmahalis. Yeah. And oddly enough, I'm going to put Real Woods in the third place spot. Where are you going to put Max Mirren? I'm going to put him in four. I think Real Woods beats Max Mirren for the three and four, and I think Lee gets second. Okay. Again, I don't want to be that guy that says Nick Lee beats Yanni. But you might want to be that guy that says Nick Lee beats Yanni. I'm not going to formally call it, but if it does happen, it was stated right here. It was stated in this video right now. And there is a chance that Nick Lee could beat Yanni Diakma. Nick Lee is a big folk style, dude. Yeah. He's a very good finisher. can get on those leg attacks without hitting his knee. Pretty much dominated Luke Pletcher, except for the last match. But the difference is those are two two high-firing guys. Whoever gets on their attack is going to score, and none of their defenses match their offenses. So you get on the leg, you score. If you don't get, you get scored on. Yeah. With Yanni, it might be a little bit different, but I think with Nikoli's finishing ability, he might be able to get past his defense. I could see it. I could see it happening, and I just – I'm going to go safe here with my pick. And I'm so going to go with Yanni Diakamahalis. Um, I'm going to go with Nikoli second. Um. Dom Demas, I think, has a comeback season and goes third. Real Woods from Stanford, I'm going to take fourth. No, where, where are you putting him at? Actually, no, I'm going to take Caden Jafeller and toss him in at fourth. Real Woods at fifth. And we're going to give Max, hmm, you know what? Let me change that. I'm going to put Max Mirren at four, Caden Jafeller at five, Real Woods at six. Because I think Max Mirren has drastically improved every year. And he's been like the one super – him, Pat Lugo have been very consistent. I'm going to take him at number four. All right. So. I don't think he gets upset at all, though. No. I think he maintains his ranking. Maybe maybe him and Nick Lee can go one way or the other. Or even Dom. Yeah. All right. So then that leaves what, Jin Jin at 149? Yeah, we'll leave him at 149. Because that's where I think he's going to go. That's really have Yanni at 149, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh-uh. I think, like you said, just for the Olympic point, I think you'd see him at 141. Yeah. So, 149, we have um, Jay Narman, Austin O'Connor, Sammy Sasso. Mm-hmm. Boo Llewellyn from Oklahoma State. Jared Deegan from Iowa State. Mitch Moore from Oklahoma, Brayton Lee from Minnesota, Ken Store from Michigan. Yeah, that's really it. Are you looking at the floor rankings? No. I was, I was just looking at snap. Right. I'm feeling I don't see him in the top four. You don't see Armin in the top four? I see him going five. Hear me out. I think O'Connor from North Carolina, correct? Yeah, that's where he's from, North Carolina, right? Yeah. He's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, you know, he's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I see him being three. Okay. And then I'm trying to see who I think. I'll hear you out. Just don't tell me some bullshit. I try to figure out. So there, go down your list again one more time. Austin O'Connor. Yeah. Sasso. I, obviously, I see Sasso as the champ. And oddly enough, Boo Llewellyn is second. Okay. And I, like I said, I see Jay Nyman at um, four. Four. Yeah. He loses to Boo. Yo, this B one I get away from. This fly will not get away from the way it is. Um. 
I think your picks are terrible. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I disagree. I think my picks are quality. You're going to have Jaden Arman. As the champ? Jamie Sasso. You think? By, I don't think so. By at least three to four points. I think Sasso beats him. Say what you want. <laughs> I have Ironman winning over Sasso in the finals. I have Austin O'Connor taking the third. Brock. Okay, you know, I'm going to change it. Still have Ironman over Sasso in the finals. I have Jared Deegan from Iowa State taking third. Um, Austin O'Connor taking fourth. Brock Mahler taking fifth. Dude, my pick change every time we do this. Where do you put Bulawala now? Do you think he is, he's an All-American? Brock you have to. Right after Brock Mahler. Okay. I think, I, Jared, I think Jared Deegan has a huge season. I think Bulawala has a, a huge season. And he, he, he lives this place in third. What? I think Boo takes third. I think Jared Deegan got robbed against Pat Lugo. I agree with that. I do agree with that. I, I think I it didn't. honestly depends on the matchups, who comes against who. Because I think – I think Jay Narman mm-hmm. – I think Jay Narman's just a number one that's way class above anybody. Yeah. I think if Sammy Sasso and Austin O'Connor meet in the semis, that could be a very interesting match. Mm-hmm. And that's where you see – and that's I think Jared Deegan can beat Sammy Sasso. And that's where you see Austin O'Connor in the finals and let him win it. I think Austin – I don't see Austin O'Connor win it. I don't see anybody being our – I'm just going to say that. All righty. So, that takes us to 157. Ironman and, Ironman and Nick Lee wrestled. Ironman majored him. Yeah. Just want to put that out there. All right, all right, all right. So, 157. Speaking of weight, no matter what anybody says. Seven Iowa pulls out Caleb Young. Where do you put him at? Obviously, he didn't have the. He went zero and two at Big Tens. Shocking! I was shocked when I saw him go zero and two at Big Tens. He might have been injured. Maybe some. I I I have to say something was going on with him. Oh yeah, no way. I see. I saw him at least being in the top five at Big Tens. But I don't. I see him placing like seventh. About. I I yeah. I, I could. I agree with that. I don't yeah. see him winning. Yeah. So here here are going to be my picks. Yeah. Ryan Deacon is going to take first. I agree. I have Kendall Coleman from Purdue. The freshman he wrestled in the Big Ten Finals. Ryan Deacon beat him 14 to 0 first time they wrestled. And it was a 7 to 4 match of Big Tens. I still think Deacon dominates him. Deacon has superior top wrestling. Deacon is a guy we might see go up to 165. I was going to say that. But with the huge logjam of those four guys at 165, I don't know. Um, I have David Carr going third. I agree with that. Hayden Hidley going fourth. I have him at second. You do? Yeah, that's what most people are going to have. Man, I don't. I don't see it. I have Jaquari Teamer at fifth. I agree with that from Iowa. I mean, from Ohio State. Um, yeah. Quincy Monday from Princeton at sixth. I think you have. Yeah, you have to put him there. You have to. He he he. Honestly, he wrestled well this season. I just think he might be a little bit outclassed in his weight class. Yeah, I agree. Another year, he's he's up there in top top two, top three. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that's with a lot of these young wrestlers that are still. Jesse Delavecchia and uh, Josh Humphreys. I'm going to yeah. say Lehigh does have a big year, so I'm going to think they, they're on team morale or something like that. So I'm going to give Josh Humphreys that seventh spot. And then Jesse Delavecchia, the senior from Ryder, or the wide sheets, the senior from Oklahoma State. Okay. So who's your final I think pick? Both equal. I think Delavecchia takes it. So Deacon's your final pick? Yeah. I agree with that. I agree. I mean, unless I, you, know you see – you know Unless what? you see a David Carr up, upset. Well, let me change that. Complete, we've completely forgot about Caleb Young. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be an Iowa video. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to put Caleb Young at. I'm putting him, I'm putting him at seven. And I'm not going to. I'm, no, I'm putting Josh Humphreys at seven. I'm knocking out. I'm putting Caleb Young at eight. I'm knocking the other two out. I agree with that. 
put him at eight. Okay. But I'm not going to be surprised if he comes and takes second. No. I, I honestly think, like I said, I was shocked when I saw him. Yeah, I think he was injured. I, I really don't know what to tell you with yeah. that. This is going to be one of the big toss up weight for Iowa. Because if Caleb can come up big on nationals, I think they can take out Cornell and Michigan. Because Cornell has no Cornell has no real competitor this way, and neither does Michigan. No. Yeah. No, you, you, yeah. you don't see anybody. Else. That's what you have to think about with these is like, if somebody else knocks off Caleb Young very early, no team points for Iowa. Yeah. No. So that's what you have to think about. Like different guys knocking off different guys. Yeah. All right. I'm going to run to the bathroom quick before we talk about 165. Damn, dude. All right. So we will just take like a two minute break and then um, we're going to be right back. All right, 165. I bet you were back. Um, yes. 165. Okay. Um, This is going to be very interesting. Wait. Again, I like going for upsets from other things, but this one I think is probably going to be more possible than Glory knocking off Spencer Lee. Or Nick Lee, not gonna, not gonna young. Yeah. So you can go first. It's re- it, it's it really is a log jam at sixty five. Yeah. yeah, yeah There's four guys though to be messed. With. That's really it. I'm gonna go with my gut here, and one sixty five. I can check with you also. What? I make no sense. I just realized what Chance of Justice is doing. Oh, I got looking at my pick. I was like, hold up. Yeah, hold on. Can you hear the fly right now? No. All right. Here we go. I am. Wait, wait, hold up. I hear the fly like insanely close, my dude. I don't know where it is. All right, that's fine. Yeah, what would you have? I mean, you have your you have your log jam here with Marinelli, Wick, Mikai Lewis, and Shane Griffith. Mm-hmm. That's your that's your log jam at the top four. Yeah. I am going to say he pulls out another one. And you see a repeat, Mikhail Lewis. Okay. I, I I think I think he he beats Marinelli he beats Marinelli again. Okay, yeah. I think Marinelli takes. I I'm just trying to figure out which side of the bracket who will be on. So okay. the way I have the black, I'm gonna have the bracket playing out. Mikhail Lewis will be the one seed. Marinelli will be the two seed. Um, Wick, do you see Wick or Griffith taking? Third, third. I think Wick has to be the three seed because I don't think they're yeah. going to wrestle the season. Yeah, I think his only loss is going to be to Marinelli, or he might beat Marinelli, you know. But either way, those are the going to be the two and the three seed. I think Griffith gets the four seed. Okay. Actually, so, no, I think Griffith gets a three seed. And Marinelli and Wick get a two or four seed. Yeah. Or I, actually, I, Griffith might get a two seed. Who knows? It could very well go either way. Yeah. Um, I think you have to see Mikhail Lewis as the one seed. So he'll have what? He'll have the guy, the three seed on his side, right? Four seed. He's the one the seed. Four seed. So he'll either see Griffith or Marinelli on that side. Okay. But, but the reason this weight class is going to be the most interesting because I think Makai Lewis is the best in the weight class. I agree. Actually, no, yeah. But. I mean, Mikhail he beat Lewis. Marinelli. He beat Marinelli. Makai Lewis versus finals. Alex Marinelli is going to be an insanely mass, close match. But Makai Lewis versus Evan Wick. 
is going to get blown wide open by Makai. Right? Yeah. Evan Wick versus Makai Lewis is going to be a dog fight every time. But I think Wick could very well win that this time. I think Mary Nelly, I think Wick was robbed of that match a couple of times. The last NTAs, you know, Wick stalled, uh, Mary Nelly stalled him out for a whole period on bottom. Uh-huh. It all depends if, if Wick can send his top right, I think he wins that match. But it's, 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 all, it's looking to Mary Nelly's favor, obviously, being the win, winner the past two times by one point. I think Shane Griffith will handle, will major a pin, Alex Marinelli. I agree. But if I think – if Shane Griffith and Evan Wick wrestle, Evan Wick could very well beat him just because of the body types and their wrestling styles. Yeah. And you see Wick I – see, I mean, you see I, – I agree with Wick. You're going to see Wick and Marinelli in the Big Ten Finals. And then, you know, Shane, Lewis is wrestling. Uh, the Mac. Griffith wrestled the Pac-12. Oh, yeah. Was Pac-12? Yeah, he wrestled the Pac-12, yeah. And, and then you see Mikhail Lewis in the ACC. Mm-hmm. And then you see Mikhail Lewis in the ACC. Big match. Shane Griffith versus Anthony Valencia in the Pac-12 finals. Yeah, that's definitely no, I, I think Griffith dominates him, honestly. But the thing is, you can't, you can't count, you can't count out Travis Whitley Lake from Oklahoma State in the Big Twelve either. Yes, we can. Uh, I, I think, don't know. I and think then, Thomas Bullard from NC State. He's. I mean, I think he gets pounded by Mikhail Lewis in the final yeah. state season. Guy, I really don't know where he's going to end up. It's Car- Carson Carchala from. Yeah. Oh, Ohio State, yeah. Um, who else? Who else are we looking at? Anyone Kennedy, Mo- Kenny Monday. Joe Lee. No. I don't From know. Penn State? You don't think so? I don't know. Yeah, what about Mason Manville? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what happened with that. No, I'm he- picking Mason Manville as a starter for this week. Cross. No, I'm picking Joe Lee. He's ranked 17. Mason Manville almost beat Cameron Caffey, wrestling two weight classes up. That, I mean, that's before Cameron Caffey got on the hot streak, so. Yeah. All right. So. I, think Ken, I think Kenny Monday. Yeah. Yeah, that's another person. Better, so. Yeah, that's another person I got to look at. Rob Kennard from Rutgers, big sleeper pick. Um, Drew Hughes from Michigan State. Yeah. You know what was a crazy match? Seeing David McFadden pinning Alex Marinelli in the Splatel. That was also crazy. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of just Iowa in general, but you know, you, you gotta do. You gotta give respect to where it's due. Oh yeah. All right. So, so I think yeah. if anybody's gonna beat Mikai Lewis, it's gonna be Shane Griffith. I agree with that. Uh, I'm I'm gonna pick my final pick though. My Kyle Lewis wins. Okay. I'm gonna have Shane Griffith first. Kyle Lewis second. Alex Marinelli, Evan Wick. You're gonna be third and fourth. I don't want to say which one's which because I do not know. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't say that either. I've Anthony Valencia fifth. I agree with that. Um, Thomas Bullard, sixth. Okay. Peyton Robb from the back. Oh, no, no, no. Kenny Monday, seventh. Yeah. And I'm going to take the freshman, Cameron Amin, from Michigan, take eight. To make, because I think he's going to make a big move for Michigan next year, number two. So, I think I'm pretty sure he's the brother to Miles and Miles Mean. All right, now that takes us to 174. All right, let's do it. Michael Kemmerer. Yep. I I don't see. I see him as a champ. I, I I that's my pick right there. NCAA champ Michael Kemmerer. You yep. know, 
with now Mike Hall, Mark Hall leaving 174, I mean, you, you got to you gotta have him there. Again, I'm going to go against you, dude. I have Logan Masa winning. You think? For Michigan? Yep. Uh, here's my sleeper. I'm not sure if Logan Moss is 65. I think he's only 74. Yeah, he, yeah, he uh, is. Logan Moss actually beat Alex Marinelli to make the Big Ten finals. To, and he lost to Vincenzo Joseph. My sleeper here, if we see him wrestle, mm-hmm. will be um, Edmund Ruth from Lehigh, who is Edward's kid from Penn State. Edward, the wrestler from Penn State. He's a kid? Huh? He's his son? Yeah, it's his son. Uh, two-time Pennsylvania State champ. Hold on, what? Edmund Root. Didn't Penn Edward State. not even graduate that long ago? No, he graduated like a while ago. No, Edward actually, maybe Edward. not. But yeah, I, I, this is this is his son. Yeah. Dude, that, that's crazy. Wrestler, wrestler out of Penn State. Uh, you know, Pennsylvania. You know about him. I thought he was like a freshman in high school this year or something like that. No, he's a freshman at Lehigh. That's wild. Which I think you see him... I think you see him wrestle as a freshman. Okay. Yeah. I think the biggest and, dark horse is going to be Carter Stroke from Penn State. Yeah. That, that we know about. Michael O'Malley from Drexel. I really like. Um, There's a Andrew McNally from Kent State. Too. Oh, jeez. Andrew McNally from Kent State, uh, senior. Um, you have Bullard for North Carolina State. Flies will not leave me alone. Do flies not, like, not go to sleep or something? Probably not. Yeah, I was just saying, Michael O'Malley from Drexel. That that I think you see. I think you could very well see him. See him, you know, winning at least one match. Yeah. No, actually, I see him play some. You think? Yep. So you want to my picks? Um, yeah, yeah. You go through your picks, and then I'll, I'll go through mine. Masa takes first, beats Kemmer in overtime. Labriola is a solid third. Yeah. Um, I see. Carter Storoki takes fourth. Caleb Romero takes fifth. Emmy Colbray takes sixth. Matt Feinsilver takes seventh from Duke. And I have Michael O'Malley from Drexel taking eighth. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you and say that Kemmer beats Labriola in the finals. Labriola? Yep. All right. Um, Masa takes third. Okay. He beats, he beats uh, Carter Strokey from Penn State. Okay, that's an interesting pick. Yeah, no, so I, uh, I have I have him at four, yeah. um, and then I'm gonna agree with you, um, and I'm gonna put your guy, uh, your guy from Drexel at uh, O'Malley. I'm gonna take O'Malley at fifth. You know who Chris Folk is? Yeah, O'Malley beat him eight to one. No, O'Malley actually, he beat him eight. He beat him nine to one in the district final. Pinned him in the region final, and beat him eight to one in the state final. So I have I'll have him at uh, um what is it fifth, and then I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Andrew McNally from Kent State at sixth. Um, okay. Bullard at seventh. And no then, Caleb Romero. Mm-hmm. No Caleb Romero. Um. Or Sammy Colbert from Iowa State. I think Sammy Colbert is gonna get eighth. Eighth, all right. No Matt's fine silver. Yeah, I know no Matt. No right. Those are interesting picks. Um, interesting picks. I know interesting yeah. picks, but I think. Okay, you know I'm I'm probably gonna change my decision for 184. Talk yeah. About, um. 184. Um. Iowa's guy, Abisad. Maybe even we may see Nelson Brands. Who knows. Yeah, I was I was gonna say you have brands too. I don't think so. Like, I was thinking they were just gonna start brands because that's his son, you know. But I mean, they, you see, you see, you see, Avisod pulling the ten 
Um, at least the rankings I'm looking at, they have him at ten. Which one? Uh, you see, uh, yeah. Okay. And then you, you see, you see, Caffey above him, which you know I think that's in, that's an interesting pick, right? You know, putting Caffey yeah. over him. He, he was. Be and I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight from, straight from my picks here. Um, right. I'm gonna go number one, Aaron Brooks. Okay. Number two, Miles Amin. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to stay an upset in the third and fourth place match and say that um, Hunter Bolden from Virginia Tech beats Max Dean. Beat, he beats Max Dean in the three and four. Okay. And five, I'm going to say another upset in the, the fifth and sixth place match. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see um, Trent, Trent Hill, they lose to Nino Bronca solely from Pittsburgh. Bonikorski. Yeah, yeah, that guy. <laughs> him. You see him lose in the uh, the fifth and sixth place match, and then you're going to see Assad get uh, eighth, and Caffey beats him and get seventh. Those are some very interesting picks. Okay. I'm going to be a little more weird with my pick. I'm going to have Miles Mean beating Max D in the finals. Actually, ooh. yeah, I have Miles Bean beating Maxi in the finals. Yeah. I have Aaron Brooks beating Luda Prey from Binghamton in the third, fourth match. I have Cameron Caffey over Trent Hidley in the fifth, sixth match. And then, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. I was going to say, no Brooks yet? I was going to say, no Brooks yet. You already have Brooks, Brooks I had placed in third. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have actually – I have Brooks placing third. Taylor Venz from Nebraska placing yeah. fourth. I'm going to take Cameron Caffey to place fifth. What the hell is with this fly? Uh, Tr- Ludaprey taking sixth. Trent Hadley taking seventh. I'm going to say Abusad gets knocked off in the blood round. And I'm going to give an eighth place spot to Nino Bonikorski from Pitt. All right. Okay. I mean, I think, you know, we definitely. I think Rocky Jordan's a big sleeper pick here. Yeah. And um, Travis Stefanik from Princeton. No, you know who's a big sleeper pick? George Walton from Ryder. Pin Travis Stefanik in the near side of World Through Cradle. Again, another New Jersey boy was part of that Brownbrook combo. Who's in that? Uh, Stefan Glasgow, Makai Lewis, George Walton, Robbie Cleary wrestled at Ryder and Rutgers for a while. They had five state champs. At, they have three state champs, five guys who should have won, honestly. I think he makes some noise. Maybe he makes it to the blood round. I'm going to say the same thing with Travis Stefanik. All Travis right. Stefanik actually beat Ben Darmstadt, but that was when Darmstadt was kind of like 30. I don't know whose idea that was to put Darmstadt at 84. Yeah. That, that just right. doesn't make sense to me, honestly. Yeah. I think, you know, you, you got some solid picks as well. Um, I just don't see Brooks going anywhere but first. I see him, if he – you know, he had a great first season. They pulled his red shirt and he showed up. Yeah. You know, won, won a Big Ten title. You know, I think he definitely was someone to watch at Nationals. I do think you definitely see him. I think I think he would have won the last year. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just think these two guys are better than him. That's all I'm going to say. All right, 197, Iowa has Jacob Warner, who is ranked number three. Dude, we're, not, we're barely at an hour. All right. That's fun. Dude, this weight class, my picks are all over the place. Yeah, my, so I, I think my say, things are terrible. Yeah, my, I think mine are all, all over. I mean, you see Noah Adams from West Virginia taking the one. No. I don't see him winning. I don't I, see him winning. I don't see him either. I see uh, Pat, Patrick uh, Brecky from Princeton winning. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I'll probably get you guys started. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can, you can go ahead. You, you say your picks. 
I'm going to have number 10, Cordell Norfleet from Arizona State winning. Not a bad pick, honestly. I was, I was, I, he was definitely going to be my top shows out for his junior season. He had a 9 to 11. He took down Colin Moore three times in his match. I think, I think he's a very good sleeper pick right there. I think Ben Darmstadt, the veteran, goes second. Yeah. Chase Singletary just made the cut. I am going third. Pat Brucky goes fourth. Eric Schultz from Nebraska goes fifth. Jacob Warner goes sixth. I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here and uh, I'm going to take Tanner Sloan from South Coast State to go seventh. I think eighth could literally go between four of the guys. Uh, it's either going to be Greg Balzac from Clarion, Michael Beard from Penn State. No, actually, no, I'm going to give, we're going to change that a little bit. So, what was that? Fifth, fourth, fifth was Pat Brucky. Yeah. We're going to move everybody down. I'm going to give. What doesn't make sense to me is Eric Schultz could very well go down to weight. Very well can. And if we see Braxton Amos, we could change that. I don't know. I think they're both really inter- interchangeable. I think Braxton Amos is a true freshman. They're probably not going to put him out there. Just give him an extra year. Not in Nebraska really needs that for anything. And I'm going to I'm gonna give the number eight spot to Michael Beard from Penn State. He comes up big. And I don't see Noah Adams placing at all. Yeah. Where, so, I, I don't know if I missed it right. Where did you put Warner? Seven. All right. Here we go. Uh, Pat Berge, rookie, rookie, however you say his last name. Champ. Over Darmstadt? Yeah. Okay. I have him Darmstadt in second. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to take a shot here in the dark and put Beard at three. Okay. And I'm going to say he beats Eric Schultz from Nebraska. Okay. And then I'm thinking, so that'll put us at fifth, the fifth and sixth place match. I think that's what you're going to see Adam Noah. I mean, Noah Adams from West Virginia. He's going to get uh, fifth. And then that's where you'll see Warner getting sixth. And then Slo- uh, Tanner Sloan from South Dakota getting seven. And then I'm going to take a shot in the dark here and say that Chase Singletary from Ohio State gets eight. Uh, I don't think that's bad. I just think Noah Adams is an insanely overhyped, honestly, in my opinion. So, you know. Oh, and finally. Oh, thing is low-key ruined because this fly is pissing me off. <laughs> All right, so I think we'll just make the jump to 85. Of course, Cassiope. Right yeah. four. Um... Gable's your man here, honestly. That's what I'm just gonna say. Um, you want you want to start running through picks, if you want. I don't think there's. Alrighty, alrighty. Here we go. Gable Stevenson, I am going to apologize to you right now. I am not picking you as my champ. I am picking that in the wrestle off, Greg. I think it's what, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Blitt. Kirk Blitt. Greg Kirk Blitt comes in, knocks off Seth Nevels to take that starting spot at the Penn State University. And he's pretty much already got granted the starting spot. He, he is beating you in the finals. Great. I'm going to take him as my champ. Hear me out. I know. It's crazy to think. He, he, he's my champ. And then you see Steveson. At second, um, Matt Stencil beats Paris for third and fourth. Okay. Cassiope loses to Jordan Woods, getting sixth. 
Okay. Uh, tra- um, I'm trying to think here where I want to put. I, I I'm looking here and I I like I like AJ Navels. Dude, I'm going top. I'm going top twelve for mine. Top your top. Your, you're going top twelve. Yeah, I'm doing top twelve. I can't really put it into. I made a whole list of who's going to come top eight. Yeah, I I did see. I did see. No, that, honestly, really. every time you look at the rankings, you just feel different things. All right, so I'm at my seventh and eighth place match. Yep. I mean, I'm gonna have to go. Trent Trent Hilger beats beating. Gannon Gremmel from Iowa State. That's, that's, that's going to be very interesting to see. We'll run through mine really quick. I'm just going to have – Um, I really haven't seen Kirk Fleet, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I think that Kirk Fleet can beat all these kids. He didn't beat Gable. Maybe it could happen, maybe it couldn't. Who knows? So I'm going to take Gable first, Kirk Fleet second. So he's going to cast the year. I think he takes third and knocks off Mason Paris. Right. Cassiope already beat Stencil pretty handily, so we'll just give Stencil that fifth place spot. I have no word on Colton Schultz, so we're just not gonna. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. I, I was thinking about that when I was. Thinking I'm gonna about take um, Luis Fernandez from Cornell coming out of redshirt to take six. Is he right? Um, I don't think so. In the top thirty, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a couple of guys that, you know, you see them getting out of red shirt, and, you know, it's going to be interesting. I, yeah, that's why. I have Luis Fernandez taking sixth. Um, seventh, I'm going to take Trent Hoger. And then eighth, I'm going to take Yaroslav Slava, Slava Kuski from Harvard. And then we're just going to say blood around guys in no particular order. I think Jordan Woods, Woods sadly gets knocked off in the blood round senior season. I think everything was just set out for him perfectly. The guys who had to wrestle the matchups, like wrestling Sam Stoll in the round of 16, pretty pretty tough match. That's probably one of the tougher matches he had. You know, that was their perfect matchup with Derek White. Ended up getting handled by Gable to Steveson in that third place, in third place match. I don't think that happens for him this year. So I think Woods a blood round dude. I think Gary Traub gets a spot over Tate Orndorff. I think Gary Traub is a blood round dude. I think Zach Yellen from Missouri. Yeah. Gets knocked off in the blood round. What about Gravel? And I'm gonna take AJ Nevels as my last blood round guy. I think Gannon Gravel gets knocked off in the round of sixteen. And so does Brian Andrews from Wyoming and Carter Isley from Northern Iowa. And John Birchmeyer from Navy. The biggest dark horse here is uh, Zachary Knight and Ward from Hofstra. I agree with that. I would say him or uh, John Spaulding from Edinburgh. John Spaulding, yeah. I've seen a lot of good things from uh, John Birchmeyer, too. Yeah. Insanely strong kid. The mostly the only match people have really seen of him in college is against Anthony Kassar, where he got pinned. So, you know. Yeah. It, it is what it is at that point. He's a true freshman. Going up against a national champion, like your first match isn't really the best draw. Yeah. Now, how quickly do you see they have um... – they have uh, Greg Kirkbitz, uh, 16. How quick, how quickly do you see him rising to the top five? Whenever he wrestles a high rank kid. Because that's the same thing that happened with um, with Tony Cassiope until he beat Trent Ogre. I think they're, they're ranking – they can't really rank these guys that high. Yeah. Even Gable Stevenson was ranked like 10th, I think, coming into his weight. Yeah. You know, basically everybody, they knew they – knew there was a chance that he couldn't beat. They just ranked them below. That's yeah. what it is. They have to play that more safe at heavyweight. It's not like they can give Sammy Sass the number one ranking in the Big Ten because he already beat that Lugo, right? Um, Kirk Fleet, I don't think, really has a past record with any of these guys. Mm-hmm. 220 his entire high school career. And 
until that one match where he bumped up Russell Gable Stevenson, lost three to two. You know, I think if Colton Schultz comes in, yeah, Colton, yeah, that, that's that's think, definitely that's definitely somebody you have to watch out for there. The college. Uh, the main thing is I don't know how Colton's going to do with these guys. I think Colton pins Paris. I could agree with that. I just yeah. think Mason Paris has no technique whatsoever. He just tries to body everybody. But against guys with him. I think Cassiope, like the way people are like, oh, he pinned Cassiope, really? That's like the only thing you hear about it. But but people are just ignorant about the fact that what happened in that match, there's like a 99% chance that that will never happen again. Yeah, no. Cassiope gets in on the single, gets a reverse ankle pin. Yeah, I, I – like I, I don't think that ever happened. No takedown, and he catches him in a tarp. Like, you don't see that stuff happen, you know. And then he, he almost pinned him in the arm bar, and then Cassie will be rolled through. Like, just all of those things just don't add up, honestly. I think if this happens again, Cassiope shuts down the dump. You know, because you don't really know until you get the feel. And you know, I think it's more of like a barn burner match, maybe three two. I think this very well could come down to riding time for Cassiope's. Paris is pretty dominant on top. I don't know. But I think Cassio is a lot better on bottom than Paris is. So I think it could very well come down to riding time and be a two-to-one match like that. Yeah. Um, I think um, Kirkley takes it to Paris. Oh, uh, yeah. Cassio be too. All right. And then finally, your overall, your dual meet, your dual champ, who's, what team's taking it home from? Let's just run through my national champ picks real quick. To just yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Let, let's all right, let's start back at the top and get to five. I'm gonna take Pat Glory. Oh, Even though realistically, it's probably gonna be Spencer Lee. I love I love watching Pat Glory. He he's just been getting so much better every year. While Spencer Lee is always going through something, maybe Spencer Lee looked very dominant this year, but so did Pat Glory. We didn't get to see in that match, so I don't really know what to tell you. Um, yeah. At 133, I'm gonna have Sebastian Rivera. I think he had a great season last year. Maybe he makes something of it. I don't know. At 141, I'm going to I'm gonna have to take Yanni, you know. 49, we're going to take Jaden Ironman. 57, it's just Deacon's weight. Doesn't really affect anything. Um, 65, 65, I'm going to have to give that to Shane Griffith from Stanford. 174, I'm going to give that to Logan Moss. Are you writing this down? I'm writing mine down here. Uh, right. And then 184, I'm going to give that to Miles Amin. 197, I'm going to give that to Cordell Norfleet. That that one might just be a shot in the dark. In heavyweight, I'm going to say it, it's probably going to go to Gilbert Stevenson. But I, champs are going to be Michigan, then Cornell, then Iowa. All right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. 125, Spencer Lee. No doubt in my mind he's taking it again. I mean, I think he – I agree that um, if we see Fix there, there is a chance that, you know – I think Pat Glory versus Damian Fix is a toss-up, honestly. I agree with that. I agree. That's that's what I'm trying to pick who I pick for second. Who who to wrestle in the finals. Um. I'm going 133 wholeheartedly. I think it's Stefan Michich's year. I think that this is this is him taking yeah. it. Um, 141. Too, you know, so I mean. Yeah. 141, it breaks my heart. I'm a big Penn State guy, but I'm going to have to say Yanni beats Nick Lee in the finals at 141. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's if he's at 141. Yeah. If Yanni drops down to 141. I think if uh, Yanni's at 149, Iron Man just goes 141. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if not, if if no Yanni at 41, Nick Lee. But if Yanni is at 41, then Yanni. Um, 49, Yanni 49, I think Iron Man wins 41, handles Nick Lee also. I think okay. Iron Man's a guy who can wrestle. Jaden Iron Man is a better wrestler than Yanni and folks stuff. Yanni looks like he's barely squeezed away with it every time. All right. Um, this is my opinion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 149, I have Austin O'Connor from North Carolina. Okay. Um, uh, um, 
157. Um, I agree with you that Deacon's just going to – that that's his weight class. Yeah. Um, then we're going to 65 where I'm going with Kai Lewis. Okay. That, that, that's a fair pick. Again, another shot in the dark with Shane Griffith. Yeah. I just um, love the way that he's been wrestling. Just didn't get a chance. He was rightfully ranked third behind uh, Marinelli and, and Wick just because he didn't get a chance to have the tournament. They, they're both prior places at the tournament. You know? I just um, think Shane Griffith obliterates Alex Marinelli if they wrestle. Um, seven, uh, 74, I'm going to go with Kemmerer. Okay. That's okay. my final. That's my final pick. Um, I, I just think Moss is tougher, and they're both about the same technique wise. I agree with the technique wise. Yeah. I just think you know, Marinelli and Kemmerer get to train together. Miles Mean and uh, Logan Moss get to train together. You know, I just think it could really go either way. You know. Here we go. One eighty four. My boy, the sophomore Aaron Brooks takes it. For okay. Penn State. Yeah, again, another fair pick. We might see Brooks redshirt. Who knows? Yeah, um, you very well can. Um, I don't know who who'd go in there. No, nah, nah, yeah, that's not that same. <laughs> I don't think he qualifies for an Olympic redshirt. I don't even think they're doing Olympic redshirt. I really don't know how the whole situation is about to work out. You know, because yeah, you know what I think happened with Colton Schultz. My bad. It just pop, I mean, to cut you off. It just popped in my head. You know, yeah, you're good. I, I'm pretty sure Colton Schultz did qualify for the Olympic redshirt last year. Because yeah. the whole Greco thing. I think he took that. He's taking an actual redshirt this year. Which is very smart on his part. Because if he were to wrestle his true freshman year, was Gable a uh, sophomore? Yeah. Right. And if he in, uh, takes another redshirt next year, for next year, Gable's a junior. Comes back, Gable's a senior. His only real competition is going to be Greg Kirkley. I think Colton Schultz... If he – when he builds into that heavyweight body, yeah. he's going to be unstoppable. He's going to take out Adam Kuhn for the world team spot. Very, very he's respectable. Gonna he's going to be better than Greg Kirk. He's going to be better than anybody. I mean, Greco's his thing. I just don't think he can uh, stop Gable's shots, Kirkley's shots. Paris has a dump. I don't, I don't see I – th- I see Paris – I see Schultz tossing and pinning Paris. I agree with that. Um, 97, I'm going to put uh, Pat Berkey from Princeton. Again, he, yeah, he didn't have the greatest season last year, so I don't know. Pat Berkey honestly looks like he's coming along a lot of weight. Heavyweight, I'm going to take my boy from Penn State. Okay. Going to beat Seth Nevels to take that starting spot. Yeah, I'm going to go great Kirk, great Kirk fit. And here we go. I am going to go. For your dual champs, I'm going to agree that Michigan takes it. What about second and third? Michigan, Iowa. And Cornell? I'm trying to look at my picture and see, like, uh, school-wise. It has to be Cornell. There's really no other way around that. Or Penn State. But what Penn State champs did you have? Uh, Brooks. And if Yanni's not at 41, Lee. Nick Lee's not winning a title. For the sole reason that if it's not Yanni there, it's going to be Ironman. And Ironman makes th- Nick Lee. I think that Nick Lee beats Ironman if he's there. That's just just, just my opinion. Um, just, I mean, I mean, I mean you're, you, you still get points for, you know, you're still getting points, right? Ranking. Other yeah, but you also have to consider – if he loses to Yanni, or no points. Yeah, yeah, you got to think there. I mean, if, if – uh, think about that. If Michigan guy, if, so, if so, all he needs is – 184 is the best example. Top two ranked guys are going to be Miles Amin and Max Dean. Correct. Fairly the only two returning All-Americans. Yeah, fairly. I mean, Dean should be ranked a little bit lower, but, you know, that could be ranked lower than Dean. But if Max Dean were to get knocked off in the semis, you know, that's a huge difference in just getting knocked off in the finals. Yeah, agree. Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay safe and pick Cornell. Mm-hmm. 
Who's even ranked fourth in the team ranks? You know, I don't, I don't even know. I see, I see, is there a team rankings? Uh, rankings. Uh, dual. Oh, four is Nebraska, dude. Yeah, no, no, they're they're chilling at number three. Yeah. I mean, Nebraska could make some noise, get some guys play some extremely high, but I don't think they have any champs yet. Like, who do they have? They have uh, nobody really at 125, 133. They have, no, they have Ridge Lovett. You know, cra- you know what's crazy to me? Christian is Wayne. that they have – I'm just looking for Penn State. Like, they have Penn State listening to Missouri. In, in what? In the duel. Where? Uh, like, if you look in the rankings, there's, like, you can see, like, the breakdown of the record. They have Penn State losing to Iowa. Acceptable. They have Penn State losing to Michigan. Acceptable. You wonder why they have Penn State losing to Missouri? Why? It's, it's a one-point match. He's ranked above him Greg Kirkley right now. Is that, is that, like – I think that might be the deciding factor. What's the score breakdown? Uh, it's 17-18. Yeah. <laughs> Because they have – all right, so they have Jack Mead uh, – let's just – I'm just going to go through this quick with you. They have Jack Mead, the um, rest of Robert Howard. Okay. They have Howard losing 5 nothing. To who? Or to Jack Meadley from Michigan. Where is that dude ranked? Uh, ranked 18. Yeah. And they have him – no, actually, that's wrong. They have him check falling Robert Howard 16 nothing. Yeah, that, that, that's not happening. No, 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 no. And they have uh, Mead Cheech beating Roman Brava Young 7-5. to five. I, th- I think Meech just wins by more than that. Yeah, I agree. Then they have uh, um, Nick Lee, major decision against Cole Matten, uh, 15-5. I think which, Nick him. I was going to say Nick Lee's getting bonus points there, which that would then that, – they have the score right now, 8-4, Michigan beating yeah. Penn State. Um, and then at uh, 190 well, – I mean, 149, they have uh, um, Keenan Store. Uh, yeah, Kane Store ranked number twelve against number twenty six Jared for clearing. Wait, are you doing Mer- Michigan or, or Michigan? Michigan. Oh, are they said Missouri, dude? No, no, Michigan. And they have uh, they have for clearing, they have for clearing losing four to six. Who? To that Keenan Store. I think Keenan Store. Yeah, no, for clearing doesn't get major like that. I think that's a close match, but I think Store wins that. Yeah, um, and then they have Brady Berge versus Will uh, Lewin. Wall. Lewin. Yeah, Lu- yeah, yeah. They have him. They have um, Berge beating him five to four. Yeah, no, that that's fair. I, yeah, I was gonna say that. I agree with that. Um, then they have Cameron Amin versus uh, Joe Lee. They have Amin beating uh, Joe Lee eight five. I can see him getting the major there. They have Michigan. Uh, beating Penn State at that. I think point Michigan can get a major there. Yeah, they, that that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a couple of toss-up matches here that yeah. you know. And, just just um, no. And then uh, they have uh, Logan Massa at 74 versus Carter Starokey. Mm-hmm. They have him losing. They have him beating Logan Massa six five. They have Carter Starokey beating Logan Massa six five. That's not happening. And then they have number one, Miles Amin, and they have Amin beating Brooke 7-6. Yeah, the, the, that's have, possible. I just see Amin coming out because, again, Amin's an inc- insanely tough dude. Overtime with more call every time. Then they have uh, Jalen Embreen. Jelani Embreen is yeah. very good. They have him uh, losing to Michael Beard 6-5 yeah. at 97. I agree with that. And then they have Paris and uh, – uh, Kirklevit, and they have uh, Paris uh, beating Greg Kirklevit eleven to eight. I think Kirklevit can pin Paris. That's what I was. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm not going to say pin because pins are premiums at heavyweight, you know, unless you're going against like scrubs. But I think Kirklevit is a lot better than Mace Paris. All right. Yeah. And then I think Kirklevit tries to pl- plays it close and wins. Yeah. In the most realistic way. That's wild. This Michigan rating, I mean, the, the Missouri is even worse. They have Robert Howard getting pinned. By who? Cameron uh, Val. Oh, what are you looking at? The, this is the Missouri Penn State. Missouri versus Penn State? Yeah, Missouri versus Penn State. They have uh, uh, Robert Howard versus Cameron I'm gonna go Valdez. They have them getting pinned. 
And they have Robo, Roman Bravo Young versus Matthew Schmidt. They have him get only decision 310. Um, and you have Nick Lee, major decision, uh, Grant, Grant Leaf. Leaf. Um, Where are you finding this? Um, if you go to the, like, uh, you click on rankings and you click on duel and then you pick your team, let's say Penn State, then you can go to, like, uh, you click, it says, like, uh, view Great. ranking breakdown. Great. How about you? Yeah, the view ranking Wait, where's Penn State ranked? Three. Oh, three, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. So let's, let's just, you know, this is supposed to be the Iowa. This is supposed to be Iowa video, but they have Iowa Wait, going 70. Schedule? Uh, you could just click on the thing, Iowa, uh, and then. Uh, no, you go do the breakdown. It should say in red lettering under the bottom, view ranking breakdown, and then there's like all of the schedule. Bro, I'm on the roster, right? No, you go to ranking. Okay, so you click on like the three lines, go to ranking, and then hit dual. Ranking then, dual, okay. And then you see how it's like Iowa, then you click on like the view ranking for you. Oh, I already clicked on Penn State. Oops, my bad. Yeah, and any of them, any of them. You can click on any of them. Yeah, and then you just go down and you can see the team. You click on the uh, compare. It says like compare. Penn State, let's go to Penn State versus Cornell. This is just up the corner right there. Buffalo, Campbell. Then you hit compare and uh, you hit compare. You hit compare, and then you can see like the matchups. Okay. So you'll see Robert Howard. Vito getting a major Robert. Yep, no, that's fair. Agreed. I I could see that. Maybe it's closer. Maybe he pins Rob Howard. I really don't know. Yep. Then you see Roman Bravo Young grabbing a major decision to tie it up. I think and Roman then, Bravo Young pins him. Then you see uh, Lee get a tech fall. Wait, wait, where are you looking? You see Nick Lee get a tech fall against Joshua uh, Saunders. I don't know about that. I think Saunders has been. No, I'm. Yeah, it's probably a late third period tech fall, though. I don't think Saunders' guys get scored on like that. No. Um. I don't think Yanni can get a major over Jared McLaren. Either do I. I was gonna. I was gonna say. Andrew I don't. McLaren's an insanely hard guy to score on that many times. Because he was yeah. very defensive. Very, yeah. He, he he honestly, he did not have a bad year at all this year. Yeah, he got pinned against Nebraska. He got caught, you know. It happens, but. Then they have Brady Berge, um decision 6-5 over Colton. Colton yeah. Um, I'm going to pick Brady Berge by major in that match. I agree with that. And then they have Joe Lee uh, majoring uh, Andrew Marola. I think that's a decision match. I, I was gonna say. Then you got because Marola oh, is not bad. They have uh they have uh Carter Sturkey fall pinning Chris Foca. Well, that's not even close to happening. No. Chris Foca is extremely underranked in this dude. I I think that's an upset bid. I can see it. Then they have Aaron Brooks uh, nine five over Max Dean. Yeah. No. Again, I think this match could go either way. Yep. I, th- I, th- I just think Dean has the experience to win it. Yep. Then they have uh, Ben Darmstadt. Yeah, Bear Technique. He wrestles with Kyle Dake. Yeah. And that's why I think they give him the edge. Yeah. Um, then they have one of the best defensive wrestlers. Aaron Brook, his offense is his best thing, offense and speed. I think Max Dean shuts that down immediately, turns it into his own points. They have Beard losing 12 6 to Ben Darmstadt. I don't. I don't see. I think Darm said to pin him. Or, I, I, or decision. I see. I see. It's going to be Darm. closer than twelve six. Yeah. No, I, I don't think he scores that many points. I think it's either like a five. Darm said either scores by five points or Darm said pins him. Then they have Luis Fernandez, uh, decision seven eight against. They have him beating Greg Kirkland. Over Greg, bro. That's 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 not happening. No. Hell no. There it is. Lewis versus common opponents. Lewis lost six to four against Greg Kerfley. Dude, the sweat. Everybody's sleeping on Fernandez. That really does not make sense to me. He lost six to four to Greg Kerfley. Yeah. Saying Greg Kerfley's in the talk to win the national title. And you're just not giving this dude any credit. 
Like I, I wrestled him, and he he absolutely obliterated me. He pinned yeah. his face senior. I think Luke, like I think ranking Fernandez at 154. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't either. Luis Fernandez is gonna all American. I guarantee you. Yeah. I mean Luis Fernandez, the thing about him, and Greg Crookfoot. Who wait, oh, who's, who's 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 uh Brendan Furman? The starting heavyweight for Cornell. Yeah, are we gonna see him there? Uh, probably no. Probably not. let's see if you switch it. You could switch it. If you switch that you have the if you click on the air, you can switch to see what the what, what yeah. you know. They have Kirk okay, I'm going to tell you something. Drew Flynn and Luis Fernandez are both from New Jersey. They both wrestled in states at heavyweight the same year. Luis Fernandez was a junior, got the six seed. Drew Flynn got the one seed. Yeah. Drew Flynn lost in the quarterfinals to the nine seed. The nine seed ended up making the finals and getting pinned by Fernandez. Shouldn't whoop them pinned. So do you think that Furman – you think Furman loses to Fernandez and Fernandez starts? I think it's Fernandez's spot. Fernand, I think Fernandez was sent to the finger legs just so he could start. Furman was just a replacement, really, in my opinion. Furman's solid, but he also did lose to Gary Trog. Yeah. Kirk did tech the Gary Trog. Yeah, I agree with that. Again, Eric Kowalsian, the guy they're putting at the common opponent – that Eric Kessian is a solid dude. He's a New Jersey he's a New Jersey state champ. You know who Peter Achardi is? Yeah. He pinned Peter Achardi in a minute in the state finals. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I mean he he did get caught, like he went for a Merkel and then got pinned. But Achardi did win the state title next year. Yeah, but that yeah. at that point it's I think Luis Fernandez over Craigley is still an upset dead. Like, you know. Yeah. I think I think Fernandez is either in the talk to like I think he's in the talk to win national title. I'm not gonna push it that far because people are like, oh, you're from New Jersey, you're just stuck in New Jersey, you know? Yeah. But I think that's very possible. Craigley, very possible. The thing about them, they're both tall lean dudes. Craigley's probably about two forty now. Fernandez is chilling like two sixty something. Yeah, they're both. They were both two twenties in high school, except for the, except for Fernandez the senior year is probably like two forty five. I just think that Fernandez is. They both maintain extremely, extreme athleticism, and um, both are amazing on top. Both ride legs. Yeah, I mean, all level. I think that's definitely going to be something that you see. Um, yeah, heavyweights yeah. more often too. We yeah, already have Ogre who does it at a very good high level. Yeah, I, I definitely, like you said, I think that's going to be a big deciding factor now in the heavyweight class now that we're, we're not at that point in college where the heavyweights are they're slow. You know, we're getting these kids that are wrestling 220, and they're not, they're not, you know, they're not going to lose their size to wrestle 97. Heavyweights aren't even – they're just big athletes. Like, yeah. Like, not, just because you don't look jack doesn't mean you're not. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh, I've seen – yeah. Like Tony Cassiope doesn't look like that much of an athlete, and then you see him, you're like, oh, yeah. Like you don't need to be hitting your knees on shots. Like Matt Stencil is insanely big, and this man's out here hitting the splits on guys. I was I couldn't believe that when I saw that. I was like, wow. It's really I made a meme about it, dude. Did you? Yeah. It was like heavyweights are inflexible. Matt Stencil hitting the splits on Mason Paris. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, no way this guy just did the splits. I was like, I, I don't. Matt Stencil actually pinned Mason Paris in the blood round. Can you hear the fly, dude? Really yeah, cool. I just heard it. I was like, whoa, what the hell? Yeah. This thing is definitely just chilling behind me. Bro. Okay, you know, uh, is there really anything much to talk about after this? I mean, I think we pretty much covered everything. I think 
this started to be like an Iowa lineup review, and I think we ended up picking our NCAA ticks, I think. Yeah, I mean, I already did one on Cornell. We could probably do one on Michigan. Yeah, I think, yeah, I was going to say, we could definitely do it on – covered everything, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I think I think we could definitely, you know, we could talk more. We could do definitely do some lineup breakdowns in the future. We might even do about, like, the duels or something like that. Yeah, we could we could pick through the duels, you know, pick through, you know, matches like that. And I made a heavyweight bracket that I think you saw that I posted. It was like yeah. 1 through 16. We could probably do like a whole breakdown of that bracket on here. Yeah, we could do a whole breakdown of that bracket. We could definitely do some more – some more lineup brackets talk about with like some recruiting and stuff like you know we can talk about Penn State recruits you know kids that you know committed to Cornell um, yeah because you know, people are mad that like I had a Mardesi above Adam Coon when he beat Adam Coon yeah because nobody really knows a Mardesi it's absolutely no credit for what he's done yeah no I was gonna say I barely knew who he was because yeah. he 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 was about to make the national finals beating Adam Coon. Until Kuhn took him down with, like, two seconds left to win. Yeah. Not two seconds. Maybe, like, 20 seconds left to win. But, like, it was a lot closer than it should have been. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Was definitely and then when Mason good. Paris handled a Mardesi, everybody's like, oh, this guy's just a bust. But, you know, he didn't have a great <laughs> season coming back. I mean, probably he was just, like, a, men- a little bit mentally damaged. Yeah. Stuff happens after that. So, you want to just wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been episode seven of Late Night Shots. Finally came up with a name. I mean, uh, and yeah, that's it. Please, guys, remember to uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, if you got this far. And thank you for watching.